So, um, this is a general uh, full season recap of Beef Season 1. So, Beef Season 1, I loved everything. I, I The things that I appreciate about this show is one, the writing. There was a lot of competent writing. There was a lot of um, understanding of where the director was going in terms of characters. And what do I mean by that? You can write a character and the character changes throughout, but you have those core values of the character that they maintain throughout the episode. So that's one thing that I liked. I like the competence in terms of direction. Now for me, it felt like this show was directed by two people. There's a Jake Hikari. Hikari every episode that was directed by Hikari felt punchier. They, it had a, a very strong sense of direction. It had a it had a, a certain sense of pacing that was much faster than Jake's. For Jake's style of direction, there was a lot of emotion. Um, that's where some of the most pivotal relationships between Amy and Danny actually happened between uh, within the episodes that were directed by Jake. Uh, Hikari again, there was a lot of Isaac and there was a lot of tension and a, a strong sense of pacing. And that's for me, that's how the, I would summarize this show. Um, the visual effects are fantastic. Um, no, no, the cinematography was fantastic. I think it's one of the best short at some point it, it felt cinematic especially with episode 9 it felt really cinematic it felt like something that they had actually visually tried to bring out that cinematic feel of an episode even the shootouts they felt intense that there's a particular death with one one character that also feels very well thought through it's not just gruesome for the sake of just being gruesome they use sound very well in that particular uh, part now when it comes to character development i think as you go on, the elevation of Danny's character for me was perhaps one of the best part of this particular show. Danny, and by elevation I don't mean elevating the character in a good way. Just making, you think that, when you, when you meet the character you think that they're having issues. Then you get to understand them, then you go like, oh they had issues. And then you get to see them also elevated to a point where boy, you ask yourself, why the hell would you do that as a normal person? Yes, you see the darker part of this character and now you start going back and trying to understand the decision with some of the action that they did in the previous episodes. For me, for Daddy, it was what the relationship between him and Paul and what he had done in episode 8. We get to see what he had done while they were growing up in episode 8 and what uh, Paul meant to Danny. And I think that was extremely selfish. And you don't get to see that until episode 8. That's why I'm saying there was an interesting way of elevating the characters. As for Amy, Amy for, for, for me was, I wouldn't call it well written, but I think she was written for the modern society. I think they had that sense of we need to provoke people, we need to write something provocative and something that um, will, will show Asian women in a different way, especially with the control. Uh, and I'm not talking, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, I'm not talking about wokeness, I'm just talking about taking this character portraying that character in a certain way and then now breaking her down and now showing you her flaws and, and show, showing you just how what we call as perfect in the society can be a train wreck down when, when you actually go back in the back back end you just find out how broken some people might be despite the fact that there are these brilliant and perfect people in the society deep down there might be a lot of things that are happening behind the scenes and, and when I talk about um, the character being designed for the modern world. There's that concept of uh, the man stays at home while the woman goes to work. You know, the woman is is bringing the the, the woman is bringing the bread while the man is is actually the stay at home dad. There's that concept. And then, but then, where now everything is turned around. You may look at that and go like, ah, Netflix is work. This is a work a work message. But then, when you stop and look at it. Amy is just a, a, a really terrible character, generally. She's a really terrible person. And you get to understand why George needed to spend more time with June. I think George is the best thing for June, rather than a character like Amy, who is um, herself has a lot of traumatic things that she had to go through as a child, and who is battling a lot of things that happened around her while she was coming up. So she, she wouldn't be the right person to actually grow up with June. She, she's not in a position to take care of someone. But she's in a position to actually um, go out into the corporate space. So rather than looking at it as, at, at, ah, this, this was trying to be work. No, I look at it as this is one of the best ways to actually create a character and actually develop that character to a point whereby we understand the kind of, you, we understand her decisions. 
we understand the decision of George. I, I did not like George, to be honest, because George is, uh, I think, is one of the characters that had to be poorly written so that they could elevate Amy. In a way, that's just me. I, I feel that he needed to be he needed to be suppressed in a way in order to show Amy as this you know outgoing successful character even Jordana I, I I never had a problem with Jordana I knew from the word go that Jordana was weird in a way she was a weird now and it's the art culture and you know how art artists are so in a way jo George for me was not my favorite character in this particular show I think he was more annoying that he needed to be I think they could have done something interesting with him. They could have had a bit of mystery to him. I think they could have given him something at least to justify who he was by episode, at least episode 8. Because what he does in episode 9 makes a lot of sense. But then, for me, it's nothing. It doesn't add really any value to the story. For me, it seems like um, we needed to add more drama. You know, if Danny was to just pass out because of the scenes that he had taken in episode 9, without having to whatever happened to him happened to, happen to him. Everything could have gone, they could have had that ending. They did not need for George to do what he did. He could have just had Danny pass out because of all the injuries that he had sustained and he could be in that particular state at the end of the show. So that George's character was not necessary for that part. But that's just me. Um, who else? I think the two brothers, Bobby and Michael, were perhaps an additional and, and they do and they did it at the perfect point which is the middle point they were introduced in episode six i think yes episode six and that's like the middle of the episode when you are starting to get tired of these other characters being kind of stale in a way that that, that drama that 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 confront, confrontation slowly started to become uh stale so they are introduced and they punch up the comedy especially the comedy the comedic effect actually now gave um, episode 6 to 10 another just the right energy that was needed to now push us to episode 10 so generally that's what I thought about the show I would say this and I said it before I did not like the music at the end of each episode I think it nuked um, the A24 effect and it did not feel like you know it did not have that punch of an A A24 production it felt vanilla it felt like it felt like a show that was developed it felt like a show that was developed for for Netflix, which is a Netflix show. So yeah, that's generally it. Beef is a very entertaining um, show. If they were to do season two, I wouldn't want them to bring back Amy and Danny. I would want them to do it something totally different people with totally different problems. Because I'm not ready to watch them again, unless they are willing to do something different with them. So yeah, that's my basic review of the full season of Beef. Thanks for watching and uh, like, if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy you don't have to. You can dislike, but you don't have to. But if you really enjoyed it, you can like, and I will see you on the... You can subscribe so that I can see you on the other uh, review that I do, of whatever I do. So, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.